So I'm working on some integration tests that have to do with analytics. And we have three different sets of analytics. Why three, not just one? I don't know, you know? They, the last engineer won three, <laughs> built another one every single time. They needed to add a new feature versus just adding on to the single set of analytics. And in addition to that, not a single one of them has integration tests. So guess what we're doing? <laughs> the tech debt, writing, the integration test. So an integration test is when you test a feature from end to end. And end to end can mean different things to different people, to different teams, to different engineering leaders. This is an integration test. A mat like end to end could mean from the front end, from when the person clicks the button, all the way to the back end and every single little thing in between that. Or if you're like me and you work on a back end service, so one of these little dots that does a very small thing for the application. An end to end could mean for you just when someone makes a request to your service or the code you're responsible for till they get out of that. And like say they send some input, they get some output, the application you build in the back end does a series of things, you test that specific portion end to end. In this case, that would be, since ours is an API, you get some requests coming in from the front end or one of our clients, we do a bunch of stuff to it and then we want to make sure the analytics are written correctly to these three different platforms. And so that is the part we're testing, just this little bit piece. It's about making sure that everything's working together as expected. It's one thing to be able to like, make sure you're writing out the analytics, but it's another thing like, given a certain input that is requested to our service, do we send out? the correct analytics at each stage of the application, or at each stage of its execution. Sometimes my integration tests fail because I forget to set the right JDK version. JDK, Java Development Kit. I work in a couple of different code bases and they use all different versions of Java. And it passes with the chick mark. Now I'm not just testing it one time to make sure the app works and I'm just opening the app in my application making sure it still works. I'm writing code that will automatically test our application anytime I want. All I'll have to do is press a play button and it'll make sure all these various things work within my application without me having to go in and like double check and like actually run the program in order to see if it works or not. These tests also make sure that if we change something in the future, we add a new feature, we delete some code, whatever it may be, that the application still works. And again, I don't have to test every single little thing every time I make a code change. I can just run these automated tests and they will do that for me, saving me lots of time. And that's why we write tests. So I have a bunch of assert statements here. And they assert a bunch of different things about how our application is working. In this case, they're making sure that whatever object I'm writing out to our analytics, it has all the properties set correctly. They all have the right values, that sort of thing. 
And since it's this big object we're testing, I created a function that it does all of these assertions and you just pass in two different objects and it asserts that they're equal. You can't just use dot equals because it'll check the references unless you override the equals method within the classes and make sure and you know check the compatibility of the internal state of the objects but I don't know overwriting dot equals doesn't seem like a good idea in case you need to use it for something else later like overwriting it just for testing reasons versus for actual reasons within your application that are needed instead of having all the asserts you could also use a different testing framework we use an older not old, but different. JUnit is getting older. Now there's JAssert that exists, and you could do all of those assertions in one single line. But the idea of bringing something to the team, <laughs> maybe I'm lazy, but the idea of adding a whole new testing framework, and then do you rewrite your old test? Do you have both in your code base? that conversion is just a lot of work. Eventually we'll probably do it or we'll do it for a new code base when this eventually gets retired. But um, for now, I kind of like my 100 assert statements and they're in a function, so it's reusable. Yeah, we'll see if it gets through code reviews. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's nice to be in a park during a meeting. You can be more focused. And especially if it's a meeting you don't have to talk in. Because you can't just like, have people yelling in the background during your meeting. Because then it's like, are you really working if you're in a park? But I am working. It's just calmer. And I'm less likely to look at my phone. I'll actually pay attention in the meeting because you have to have the meeting on your phone. <laughs> so what do I hate most about software engineering? Probably integration tests. <laughs> Writing the integration tests. Um, so part of me thinks like if I do more of it, maybe I'll start liking it. But what do these integration tests actually look like? Oh, my foot's asleep. <laughs> so like every function, can you see it? Thanks. So you have the start and the end, right? And one of the things that is a part of this whole process are your dependencies. And so your dependencies might be live calls out to other systems, they could be internal libraries, and it's kind of up to you what you want to mock versus keep live. And by mock, it's like adding a sample JSON, um, think of it as sample text that represents what the service is supposed to return. So you'll have like Say you have service, A, B, and C, and you're mocking the responses, so you have sample responses with them. And then you're going to put all of this input, all of this mocked data, into your code, into your process. You're going to say, when these certain things get called in my code, I'm going to return these different things. Then you'll call your process your code. And then at the end, you'll be like, okay, well, did A, did A do this? Did B do this? Did C do this? And you know, this returns something. Say it returns I. Here you'll make sure I is what you expect it to be. And you're verifying everything from like the values that are returned and like the certain things that happened internally, as well as if certain things were called or not, if certain services were used. So like maybe service D was supposed to be used and you know, it never got called, it never got used in your process, which means something might be wrong in your process, in your application, and then you'd have to go and debug that. So a lot of people hate these. So why is this annoying for most software engineers? Why do people hate doing the integration tests, writing them out, 
And I think it's because it's a lot of context switching. When you have to know everything returned by every service and the format of it. So service A returns this, service B returns this, service C does this. Um, you have to kind of context switch between all these different functions and all these different parts of the code. Whereas when you're building a feature, typically it doesn't, or like you're doing a user story, it kind of only involves one area. It doesn't, you don't have to think about the code base as a whole. You can just think about did my little piece work um, as expected. And, and you know, that's nice to write out, but you know, you gotta make the whole product work at some point, right? You also have to like look, when you're creating these integration tests, you also have to look through so much of the code and create this mental map of like how things are working together with that context switching. And you can't really like write it out. Maybe there's a sequence diagram that someone at some point created. And they likely only created it because another team asked for it, which is good because you should always create the sequence diagram. But even if it's created, like the likelihood that it'll be out of date is high. So you're kind of just keeping this mental map in your head. And you, of course, could create the sequence diagram, but every, like, the only thing worse than integration tests is writing documentation, right? And even worse than that would be front end. But they did make this button, so please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. They worked really hard on it. And they told me to tell you about it. So it felt like if I did these integration testing part, it would make me happier. Did it? I don't know. But I will say, this is a newer code base I'm working in. It uses graphs, which I don't enjoy. And I didn't really understand what most of these graphs did before, but now after writing these tests, I do understand it a little bit more because I had to look through a lot of the code and like see what was going on. Are you hungry? What do you want? It's not a weird question. Like, quit trying to make you aware. It's a good question. Do you wear sunglasses? Like, do you put them on and then exit? Like, wherever you are indoors? Or do you... Wait till you get outdoors and the sun is in your eyes and then you put sunglasses on. Is it weird to wear sunglasses inside? Now, I think the real reason people hate writing integration tests is it's kind of like you're learning how to quit again. There's like a lot of things you don't know because it's a new code base, new systems, new things talking to each other and you have to relearn it all. And that sucks when you're first learning to code. And it's like, that's happening again. So we got the Ice Max, we got the haagen -Dazs. We just passed another ice cream shop over there. We got Rita's. Why are there so many ice cream shops? <laughs> I don't know. Out of ten. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I like it. It's refreshing. Well, writing tests is like writing your code twice. It's like you write your test, or you write your code, and then you have to figure out a way to verify it without writing the same code you already wrote. And sometimes you might create a whole other algorithm to do that verification, or you might like, I don't know. If you think about mathematical principles, like if you wanted to verify addition, addition works as expected, you could use a different mathematical tool to like prove that. Like, let's say you add two numbers. If you take that result and then subtract both numbers, the result should be zero. That's like an algorithmic way of verifying addition. You're using other algorithms to verify the initial algorithm works.
And you might think it's just analytics. Like, why do you need integration tests to make sure you're writing out the correct thing to your analytics platform? And well, that's because analytics provides, it's important to the product owners. Other teams use it, they care about it, it informs whether you build certain features or not. And people kept complaining that it was broken or breaking every time we deployed. And you know, once people complain enough, the user story gets written, and that's why I'm working on it today. And today I wrote a total of three tests. Alright, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy coding!